finishing green zirconia. With the products that we have today, whether we infiltrate, whether we stain and glaze, or whether we're using a multi-layered zirconia block, or maybe all three combinations, I like to do my shaping, my texturing, and my luster finishing before we center. That's what this video is about. We're gonna go through the JK04 Meisinger finishing kit. We're gonna use the pre-centering side of the kit. That's to finish the green zirconia. We're gonna refine the grooves, some of the anatomy, place your pericamata and other little nuances that you want. We're also gonna place what we call luster finishing before we fire. This is the secret to really making the post centering finishing very effective. And you'll see what I mean by that as we go through this video. So let's go ahead and get started. step separating the sprue from the block it's real important that we do this carefully I like using a thin carbide burr hold the crown with the occlusal view it's really important the crown doesn't drop on the lap bench I've seen that happen several times and then it chips the margin you definitely don't want to pound the block sprue connection on a table to separate. That could potentially break the crown and you may not see that until after you center. To remove the remaining sprue content on the restoration, I like the carbide pointed burr. That's on the JK04 Zirconia Finishing Lab Kit. The next step is to refine occlusal and external anatomies. I do this for me. This is the small centered diamond on the JK04 lab kit. That's the zirconia lab kit. With a slower RPM, carve in as desired the occlusal and external groove anatomy. I like creating a crafted masterpiece. This is more of a perception that I have. Even though we're using a carbide milling system here with a needle burr on the right side, this is the Densupply Serona milling unit. It will provide great anatomy. I still like to up my game. And part of doing that is making the anatomy look good. Now when I'm carving in these subtle little anatomy nuances, Take that burr at a 45 degree to that occlusal table. That will create more of an emphasis within the anatomy and make it more realistic. Now, I have a cusp of Caravelli. I like to provide that with every client I have because it hurts when you bite on it. But seriously, this is a craft. This is an art. I like to master what I do. I look at anatomy. I become a noticer of what we see in the mouth and then we produce that for our clients. On the buckle, we're gonna spend a little more time with that buckle groove, refining that groove so there's more separation between the mesial and distal cusp. Remember, the mesial cusp is a third premolar in the small secondary zone. The next step is the larger centered diamond on the JK04 Zirconia Finishing Kit. I like this, particularly for finishing off that labial micro texturing, and we'll observe that in just a moment. Light pressure, always keep the burr moving so you don't gouge the soft zirconia. This is Peri Kamada. It's a light dance with the tip of that burr across that surface. Place this on before you center because it's almost impossible to do after you center. And any other further refinements? These two diamond burrs are my favorite for creating what I call micro surface texture and groove refinement. Now in my hands, I have found that creating the final luster starts before you center. This is a pink twist on the JK04 Zirconia Finishing Lab Kit. The pink twist, it polishes well in the green state. That's the chalk state. What we're wanting to do here is soften the texture. That's a basic concept in texturing. You want to texture and then neutralize. 
and approximately stay cervical to that contact so we don't open up that contact when we seek restoration. Polish away from the margins around 10,000 K RPM with a soft touch. This is very effective. It won't gouge. It's fairly forgiving. That's the pink twist polisher here. It's very forgiving. And just work that surface until you see what you want. On the occlusal table is a polishing application. Use the side of the twist polisher and it will effectively polish the triangular ridges and the convex surfaces. The final pre-centering luster polish happens with the beige twist. I use this if I'm not going to infiltrate. If you infiltrate, this may marbleize, create that really smooth zirconia surface and your infiltration will not infuse. When I'm not infiltrating, this really creates a beautiful luster when it comes out of that centering furnace. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. As before, polish away from the margins, soft action. We can polish a bit on the proximal contact. This won't necessarily open up. And there's that beautiful labial texturing. And this is where I get my rush, the beauty, the craft of morphology. Now we're ready to center. I love watching the sunrise with a little hot beverage. It's the same feeling I get when I watch the descending of that beautiful restoration glowing like a sun. Retrieve once the restoration cools down and this is the luster that we see right out of the furnace. That's the result of the pre-centering luster polishing. The next video will review the final luster polishing once centered.